senior airman Cameron Chisholm. I'm an aerospace physiology technician and I've been in the Air Force for about two and a half years. My responsibilities here at Laughlin Air Force Base as an aerospace physiology technician are to ensure that the UPT students, our undergraduate pilots, understand about the physiology of flight and we do that through using different kinds of trainers, teaching them about egress and also having them experience physiology in their bodies. One of the new pieces of equipment that we've acquired here at Laughlin Air Force Base is the Spatial Disorientation Trainer, or the Gyro IPPP-2. Um, this piece of equipment is used in spatial disorientation. This trainer requires three technicians to operate. Those positions are lecturer, crew chief, and operator. The Gyro IPPT-2 are interchangeable. We ensure that each technician gets equal amount of experience in each position, so we're always cycling through. So my job as a lecturer is pretty much to ensure that the students understand the profiles that they're going through. It's gonna ask you to look over at your landing lights at one point, so all you're gonna do is look over your left shoulder and down. Can you do that for me right now? But one of the biggest things that we want to instill in the students when they're inside of the trainer is that we as a lecturer are here for them to give them the comfort to know that someone is paying attention to them and giving them the security they need to properly execute their flying and training while inside of the, IRO, the gyro IPP2. For this training session, I'll be acting as a crew chief. Uh, my primary responsibilities as a crew chief are to maintain safety of the student both inside and outside of the trainer and uh, just make sure all the connections are good to go before he steps in to maintain a proper working environment at all times. And then pull across. There aren't a whole lot of differences between being a crew chief for the altitude chamber and the spatial disorientation trainer. Although the medium has changed, a lot of the skill sets that we learned in the altitude chamber have carried on to the spatial disorientation trainer. And we're able to use those skill sets to make sure that the pilots receive their training as fast as possible. For today's training session, I will be the operator. So there is 27 different profiles. The three main ones that the students will be doing is the Coriolis effect, the nystagmus, and the graveyard spin. And those are the three main ones that we hear about whenever it comes to any spatial disorientation faults um, during any mishaps. So that's the one that we always have them practice the most. The Coriolis is when two semicircular canals are combined, which gives a tumbling effect. The nystagmus is the rapid eye movement, and then the graveyard spiral is when your body is in a turn for so long that that starts to feel normal, that when they actually try and come straight and level again, they have a tendency to turn the complete opposite to overcorrect for themselves. The biggest difference of being an operator for the chamber and the new spatial disorientation trainer is the interfaces. For the chamber, it's more of a pressure based and you're pulling a lever to simulate altitude. While with this new spatial disorientation trainer, you are setting up a simulation for the pilots to learn. Uh, we're excited to, uh, to acquire this new uh, spatial disorientation trainer. Uh, spatial disorientation has been a, a long-standing historical problem for the Air Force. We've, um, we've continued to attempt to uh, decrease the, the mishap rate due to spatial disorientation over the years. What this new device uh, allows us to do is it allows us to take pilots and put them into a, uh, a safe training environment and to be able to generate a large number of visual and vestibular illusions so that they can experience it firsthand so that hopefully they're able to recognize what the problems are sooner in flight, understand how to correct for them, and ultimately reduce the number of spatial disorientation related uh, mishaps in, uh, in aircraft. It, it allows us to move into the, uh, into the, into the modern age of, of education and training. Um, we've been working very hard for the last uh, month, month and a half now, to get the facilities ready, to get our, our uh, airmen trained, qualified, ready to go. Yeah, they're looking forward to being able to add one more facet to, uh, to air crew safety and to, to train the, the, the pilot starting from day one essentially, and, uh, and hopefully improve the, the overall safety and competency of, uh, of our Air Force uh, as we continue to move into, uh, into the future. All right, so we're going to go ahead and end this demonstration.